Okay, good afternoon. <clears throat> I have really a pleasure because it's really a friend who is coming today, uh, Xiao Wang. He is a junior professor at uh, PolyU. And PolyU has now a large uh, project paid by the government of Hong Kong to investigate the fundamental aspect of air pollution in an urban area that is in a tropical region, but also at the coast, so that air pollution is affected by, for example, chlorine coming from the ocean, uh, or by isoprene coming from the north, from, from China, and all that mixes with the NOx produced in a very, very complicated geographic environment, mountains, high-rise buildings, street canyon, the best place for modelers who like to do large eddy simulation, high resolution uh, studies, that's, that's, very, that's very excellent. But there's also a lot of interesting chemical problems inside the city, and in particular, heterogeneous chemistry, I guess, on the buildings or on the particles that are there. And so Joe will talk to us a bit about what he has done in the laboratory and also in the field, I guess, <coughs> regarding the uh, heterogeneous chemistry, uh, in particular in 205. And the title also includes a collaborative program on photochemical air pollution on, you know, in this region of the world. So it, it is a very uh, strong program. It is uh, one of the program that happens in the Great Bay area around Guangzhou, uh, Macau, and Hong Kong. 100 million people living there. And a lot of young people are very interested in atmospheric chemistry. So every time I go there, I see a lot of enthusiasm about what the future of this region will become, in particular air pollution. So Joe, it's for you. Well, uh, thank you very much for the uh, introduction, and uh, thanks for inviting me to visit Enka. So it's it's my pleasure and the honor, you know, to to be here. So today I'm going to talk about the uh, some study about the N205 chemistry, and also introduce the the program just as Guy introduced. So uh, sorry about the long title. And uh, I'm currently working at Hong Kong Polytechnic University, I'm, and and uh, I will soon move you to another university still in Hong Kong and about starting my uh, another career you know, in Hong Kong University of Science Technology in September. And uh, so the uh, topic I'm going to the outline, I'm going to cover in you know, including the two topics. So first one is uh, heterogeneous chemistry in China. So the few campaigns we have done in China and also some uh, modeling analysis on this data. And also, and I'm going to briefly introduce what the large program are focusing on, and what's the objective, and what's the uh, strategy. And also, we are welcome for you guys to to be, you know, collaborate with us, and also for future uh, uh, collaborative studies. So first, and uh, for the nitrogen chemistry, nitrous oxide chemistry. So you know, we have been know this for a long time. So we know the daytime chemistry of NO, NO2, and also the formation of the ozone from that. And also, in the, during the nighttime, actually, there are also some reactions happen. Now, we know this long, long ago, and people are knowing, so there are some reactions happening in the nighttime. But this problem ha haven't been you know, rising uh, a lot of uh, attraction be before, until last uh, like 10 or 15 years. So. We know that in the nighttime, when there's still a lot of NOx, like NO2 and ozone, so they will further react to form a uh, nitrate radical. And this nitrate radical will further react with another NO2 to form the NO5. So this NO5, so we know this chemistry, we know that NO5 can happen, can undergo the heterogeneous reaction before. And uh, for example, on the aerosol surface or different uh, other surface, especially on the aerosol surface, when there is water on that, that can hydrolysis. So N205 can, can happen hydrolysis and form the nitrate. So this is a 
another important uh, formation pathway for, for inorganic aerosol nitrate. Well, when there is chloride existing in the aerosol, so this reaction will further react it to form another uh, species, is chloride nitrate, so ClNO2. So we, we have known this reaction before, but we didn't pay a lot of attention on that. You know, one reason is that we, do, we, don't ha we didn't have you know, good instrument to mirror all this kind of uh, spaces because they are really, uh, really highly uh, reactive, and also it's hard to be mirrored. And uh, the, the, after we have this uh, ability to, to do the mirrorment, so people are still starting uh, uh, focusing on this because of the CnO2 after it's formed or produced during the nighttime, accumulated during the nighttime, when there is sunrise in the next morning, so it will photolyze to produce chlorine atom or chlorine radical. That can be act just like OH radical, so, so uh, involved in the photochemistry in the morning and contribute to the ozone formation and also contribute to the SOA formation. So there are some studies actually uh, conducted in US, the modeling studies showing that this chlorine uh, chlorine nitrate can contribute to the ozone increase in the morning, like a 10 or, or several PPBs that contribute by this chemistry. So, so this is an uh, you know, N2O5 heterogeneous chemistry. Well, because of the uh, instrument you know, difficulties and challenges, there was no concurrent measurement of the N2O5 and also the nitrate chloride before. Until the 2008, so there is a first concurrent observation conducted in, in, in US. And after that, you know, there are a lot of studies you know, conducted in different regions in the world. But however, there is little or no observation on the N2O5 and, and the chlor uh, nitric chloride you know, before 2012. There is almost, before 2010, there are almost no data. We don't know what the N2O5 chemistry and their impact on the air quality in, in, in the China and Asia region. But why we care about the N2O5 chemistry in this region? But we know, in a, this is a map showing the, how the NO2 emission, uh, NO2 pollution in the world. I also saw this. I also saw this map in the in your lab, in the some you know uh, outside someone's office, and the same the picture showing the hot spot of the East Asia, especially East China. So I have a large emission on the NO2 uh, NOx. At the same times. So this NOx emission is still increasing, and if you compare to the old data, compared to the decreasing emission from the uh, US and also from the Europe. At the same time, so we have very high concentration of ozone, especially after the PM problem, after the reduction of the PM emission and uh, concentration in, in, in mainland China. So the ozone starting to, to a more serious problem in the urban regions and also the uh, urban cluster regions. So we have high ozone concentration. And I still remember in 2005, we record the highest ozone concentration in, in somewhere near Beijing. It's 286 So by that time. So we have high NOx, high ozone. Sometimes we have high concentration of particles and also a lot of chloride. So that can make the N205 heterogeneous chemistry and also CO2 production very active. So but how their impact on the ozone and the, and the particles, that's a, the, our interest, we want to do that. So, and uh, starting from the 2010, we, we got a new instrument, it's a chemical analyzation mass spectrometry. So that's from the US, from Georgia Tech. So we, you know, after we got this instrument from 2010, we spent about two or three years until we get the first usable data. So th because of, you know, in, in US we have, you have much lower concentration of particles and also other pollutants. But in China we have different, uh, you know, we have high aerosol loading and also other pollutants together. We, 
if you want to make this instru instrument work, it took a lot of time to and efforts to optimize the 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 inlet system and also the detection system. So until 2014, we're starting to have more you know usable and and valid data. So this is a. a Seems we're using the uh, iodine chemistry and try to detect the N2O5 and the chlorine nitrate and uh, using uh, these things. So the, and, uh, and also we conduct some uh, comparison and in addition to these things, there are some other techniques also can detect the N2O5 and also the NO3 radical. That is why instrument from the NOAA, just in Boulder, so Slim Brown, and uh, he took his instrument to Hong Kong. So we did some comparison uh, experiment together. So basically, so the two different uh, techniques is showing consistent result. I will show you some uh, more result later. And by using this themes, actually we conduct a uh, lot of few campaigns in China, including north, northern part of China and the southern part of China. And also, especially in Hong Kong, we, we, we did measurement if, in different locations, in some background, a coastal uh, size, and also the mountain top sites in Hong Kong and also in the North China. So overall, we have more than 10 campaigns, you know, starting from 2011 to 2018. So basically, all these kind of data showing that we have high concentration of nitrate chloride, but also sometimes we have high concentration of N205. But the problem is, when you have high concentration of nitrate chloride, so it, the current understanding for the production pathway of chlorine nitrate is only from the N205 heterogeneous chemistry. But when you have high ClNO2 concentration, but you don't have too much high concentration for N205, that means there are a lot of, there are very active or fast hydrolysis reaction happens in, in the atmosphere, okay? So I uh, just briefly show you some uh, uh, few campaign results. And uh, this is one uh, campaign we conduct in North China. So in this campaign, we, we found very high concentration of nitrate uh, chloride. And uh, normally, after the sunrise, the nitrate chloride, well, photolysis getting done. However, in this campaign, we found the concentration still increase after the sunrise, can up to 2 ppb and uh, after the sunrise. So, which means there are still some, you know, uh, not continuous production, but there are some high concentration of uh, nitrate chloride existing in the residual layer. When this, you know, when the sunrise and uh, the boundary layer blow up, there are some high uh, uh, chlorine, nitrate chloride, and the uh, plumes are transported down to the, to the uh, near the ground. So, and uh, also, and uh, in the mountain side, this is a 1,500 meters high. We observe uh, frequently very high plume of the, with CO2, uh, with high concentration with CO2, together with high concentration of SO2 and NOx. So we, 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 we believe these uh, plumes are, uh, actually come from the, some coal burning plumes in, including from the power plants and also some industry. So that also you know, proved the existing of the high CO2 concentration in the upper layer of the you know, uh, troposphere, especially during the nighttime. It's already, already above the you know, boundary layer. Well, in the southern China, actually, in 2006, uh, 2013, we've observed the highest ever you know, concentration about CO2 and N2O5. So the N2O5 concentration is still the record, 7.7, .7, and, and for CO2 is about 4 ppb. So during one night, so when the air mass come from the, the uh, mainland China, from the Pier River Delta region, together with a lot of emissions, we have high concentration of CO2. That can have large impact on the following day's photochemistry. I will show you some results later. Well, we saw it was the highest you know, concentration record. But later in 2017, when we do the campaign 
also in southern China, but in another region, in the Pier River Delta region. So when there was a severe haze episode, we observed an even higher concentration of nitrate chloride. It's about 8.3 ppb. That is much almost the double of the, the previous record. So in this severe haze episode, actually, you know, we have ozone concentration above 140, and also the PM 2.5 is around 400 microgram per cubic meter. So during this severe haze episode, so we found very high concentration with N2O5 and also the, the ClNO2. So later we study the, 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 the impact on, on this high concentration of nitrate chloride and N2O5. Okay, so these are the basic introduction and the few campaign we, we conducted. But in the N2O5 chemistry, there is one, uh, because it's very fast hydrolysis and the heterogeneous reaction happens. So there's the one parameter that has been used to describe the N2O5 heterogene uh, heterogeneous chemistry is a heterogeneous uptake coefficient. So this equation has been you know, known for a long time. And uh, so we are trying to understand the how the N205 uptake coefficient in, in this region and also the influencing factors. So uh, some background introduction. So in the lab laboratory, actually, we, we can use the you know, uh, lab-made uh, aerosols and to using flow tube to conduct the uptake uh, experiment and to directly mirror the uptake of the N205 on different aerosols. So they're based on this laboratory study and the people are proposing different uh, parameterizations are trying to describe this uptake coefficient, including Evan and, uh, Evan and uh, Jacob. They're using a simple uh, aerosols and try to uh, develop a parameterization only, only consider the temperature and the RH. And later, Bertrand and the Sultan, they, develop, they de developed a, a, a new parameterization that consider both the particle size, RH, and also the aqueous phase uh, aerosol compositions together. So this is a, currently the most the, uh, popular used, widely used parameterization in, in the model. So they try to de develop this parameterization so that can be put into the uh, chemical transport model to simulate the chemical reaction, like heterogeneous uptake of N205 and also the production uh, the, uh, of other products. And uh, well, these are only considered inorganic chemistry. But later, some uh, researchers also propose, and uh, because of their organic aerosols in the ambient, so how they, they consider the organic as a coating that suppresses the N2O5 uptake. So they also pro pro uh, propose a different uh, parameterization. Well, and we know in the field, actually, ambient aerosol has a complex composition, not only nitrate chloride, but also you know, different uh, compo uh, composition. So after you conduct a field measurement, so you get the N2O5 and the nitrate chloride data. So how can you derive or get the N2O5 uptake coefficient? So people are also, the researchers, the Steve Braun, they propose using the uh, steady state method, uh, consider the NO3 radical uh, in steady state. So I try to use the mirror, the N2O5 and, and other uh, aerosol data to derive the N2O5 uh, uptake coefficient. And the later some People are also, you know, trying to use the the production rate of the products, including nitrate and uh, uh, nitrate chloride, to derive the uptake coefficient. And also, and uh, uh, some people propose using an uh, iterative simple chemical box model, are trying to derive the uptake coefficient, considering the uptake loss and also the products of the N2O5. So, well, uh, later. Bertram and Sultan they propose a new method. They just bring the you know flow tube we normally use in the lab to the field, and they directly introduce the aerosol, ending aerosol into the flow tube to mirror the uptake of the N2O5. So difference of at the bottom of the uh, flow tube to see how the N2O5 uptake by the ending aerosol. So this can. Give, it's kind of a direct measurement technology that can give you directly into a five uptake coefficient. Well, this 
method is simple, robust, and direct measurement. But however, there are also some drawbacks, but some limitations. So uh, it can be only applied to the condition when, when the air mass is stable, and all the pollutants like NOx, ozone, are stable, no change during the measurement cycle. And also there's no fresh NO emission. So well, that is okay and for most of the regions in in US. But in in China actually we have a large concentration of NOx, ozone, and also NO. So this method cannot be directly used. So in in that way we're trying to improve the method. We by using the same concept, like in uh, the flue tube reactor in the field, uh, we introduce the aerosol, also introduce the ending aerosol into the flue tube reactor. But in uh, instead of directly comparing the uh, bottom concentration, we introduce an iterative box, chemical box model, uh, trying to consider all the reactions happening in the flow, uh, flow reactor, and also uh, try to derive the uptake coefficient you know, by comparing with and without the ambient aerosol in the flow reactor. So we also did uh, uh, modeling uh, simulation and also la laboratory tests, uh, and we show that actually our system can be applied to the uh, condition with high NOx and high ozone con concentration condition, and also can buffer for the NO emission or concentration up to six or eight ppb. So this uh, uh, simple uh, uh, figure show how the difference between when the aerosol on and aerosol off. So you can see the difference. And by using this difference and also the iterative box, box model, you can derive the uptake coefficient. So here is uh, the uh, summary of the uptake coefficient measurement. And not only from the direct measurement, but also derived from the other, using other methods as I in just introduced before. So basically, from the US and the Europe, and all the uptake coefficients are ranged in the uh, point 0.001 to point 0.04. However, in mainland China, and also in Hong Kong, in, the, in this region, we found much higher uptake coefficient. That is consistent with the uh, uh, observation result that we have, uh, we have higher you know, CLO2 concentration. And also, same times, we, we find much higher and uh, variability of the uh, yield of the chlorine uh, nitric uh, CLO2, and also uh, be, in the, and, uh, much higher than the previous study in Europe and, and the US. That is also depending on that we have a lot of chloride in the emitted from the anthropogenic emission in the aerosol in this region. Well, and uh, after we, we got the few measurement data, and people are thinking about, OK, and uh, how about the parameterization? And how the, these few data compare to the parameterization used in the model? So we also did some comparison. As, we, as, I, as I mentioned before, the, uh, the Bertram and the Sorton 2009 parameterization is widely used in, in different models like WolfCam and WolfCMAC. And uh, so we, 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 did, we did some comparison with a few derived data and, the, the, and also the data uh, and the value estimate from the uh, parameterization. As show the blue color uh, markers, these are uh, including our own measurement data and also some other data measured by, by other groups in, in, in Europe and also US. So basically, we can see the parameterization overestimate the uptake coefficient you know, for all, almost all the you know, studies. So later, and uh, some researchers proposed that maybe the chloride effect was, was overestimate. So they decided to remove the chloride effect in the parameterization by, by setting the chloride concentration as zero. So it seems like this uh, overestimation has been you know, reduced. But still, in Europe and the North America, so the uh, uptake coefficient estimate from the, uh, this parameterization is still higher than the data derived from the field. 
And also, but in China, so this parameterization seems to underestimate the, the uptake coefficient. And also some uh, other study, we were also trying to use other study propose the organic suppression effect into the parameterization. But by considering this color, uh, this effect, uh, the color show the red color and the green color, it's far away you know, from the environment. It's much underestimate. So now we, we try to think about, you know, since the parameterization cannot well you know, capitalize the variability and the value from the field, then how can we use in the model to better, if we want to simulate better the N205 chemistry and also their impact. So we're trying to ha have a look on the mirrored N205 uh, uptake coefficient and also the influencing factors, how they're depending on the different uh, factors like aerosol composition and the for the China campaigns. So we put five campaigns data together and we, and we see the dependence of the uptake coefficient on different uh, like water, aerosol water content, uh, chlorine content, and also the nitrate content. So we can clearly see a positive relation dependence of the uptake coefficient on aerosol water content. So basically it's controlled by the aerosol water content. And uh, a clear separation effect from the nitrate. So high nitrate, and you have much lower uptake coefficient. Well, for some uh, single field campaign, we can see some uh, chlorine promotion effect. But overall, when we put all, all these five campaigns together, we didn't see a clear effect on the chlorine. So the, basically, the uptake coefficient we measured in, in China is you know, mainly controlled by the aerosol water content and the nitrate. So we think the uh, the parameterization proposed by Bertram and Sorton, so the basic concept should be okay, but the parameters inside the parameterization may be a little bit different in Hong Kong or, and also China. So here is a the data from for the five campaigns, so uh, from the uh, original BT O zero parameterization, and also we compare by removing the chlorine effect. So it's uh, underestimate as I mentioned before, and we're trying to derive a new parameterization, not a totally new parameterization, but new parameters that can be used in this parameterization. Well, which we're using the multi uh, linear multiple regression on the all the mirror measurement data. So which it seems you know, the both the variability and the mean values of the uptake coefficient can be improved by this uh, empirical parameterization based on the observation data from the five campaigns. So if you compare the the measurement data with the fitted newly fitted parameterized parameterization, it can basically reproduce the variability and also the mean value. And uh, also we, we have looked on the, uh, the parameters. So these parameters are, are relatively, uh, for example, this, this parameter is much lower than the original parameter proposed by Bertram and Sorting. So this can you know, suggest, so first the chlorine effect pro uh, promotes the uh, production of nitrate chloride can be less, less than the prediction and less than we expected. So, so that this, this parameter is much smaller. And in another way, so there may be other separation effect, including organics. And also, for example, like the mixing state of the aerosol, the av availability of the chloride in the aerosol, that can be accounted now in this reduced uh, parameters. But currently we, we don't know exactly how to quantitatively accounting for the, this effect in the model or, or including the mixing state, including the av availability of the chloride in the aerosol. But by using this uh, fitted parameterization, we can basically reproduce this an uptake coefficient in, in the uh, you know, in different regions in China. So to validate 
this parameterization and, and uh, uh, see how this per, uh, parameterization performs in the model. We put this uh, parameterization in a WolfCam model, uh, Wolf CMAC model, and try to compare the simulation by using this new fitted parameter and uh, with a few measurement data. So we compare the NOx and also the uh, nitrate, particle nitrate concentration from different uh, sites in, in northern China. Overall, we can see so the, the newly fitted parameters can better reproduce the concentration of the nitrate and also the NO2 compared to the original uh, 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 parameterization. And especially the bias is largely reduced compared to the uh, original parameterization. So this is the, the, uh, uh, the study on the uptake coefficient. Well, as I mentioned before, the N2,5 and the chlorine chemistry actually are important for the air quality because they can produce nitrate, nitrate uh, particles and also affect the photochemistry in the, in, in the following days. So we also conduct some study and try to evaluate how this kind of N2,5 ke chemistry affects the uh, nitrate and also the, uh, the photochemistry. So as I already introduced before, so the, the uh, chloride radical produced from the nitrate uh, chloride in the next morning actually can be involved in, in the radical chemistry and contribute to the uh, photochemistry, especially in the early morning. So as I mentioned before, in the northern China campaign, we found the high CLNO2 concentration in the early morning. So we did some uh, box model simulation and by using the MCM, and uh, we found that for, for the high concentration of CLNO2, it can produce very high concentration of chloride radical in the morning. That can contribute to the overall rocks or uh, radical chemistry and uh, increase by 10 to 30% of the ROX in the morning. That can increase a lot for the photochemistry, like increase the ozone production. So, and this is the result on the ozone production. By including this chlorine, uh, uh, chlorine nitrate uh, chemistry in the model, and we can see the difference for, for the average uh, campaign for the uh, uh, campaign average case, so the ozone increase because of this CLNO2 can be up to 4 ppb. Uh, most of the increase are contributed in the, in the mo early morning. And for a very uh, large case, the episode case from the mega city plumes, that, in, that can increase the ozone concentration up to 10 or 13 ppb. That is about 11% of the total ozone producing the day, daytime. And also in southern China, similarly, we can see by including this uh, nitrate chloride chemistry that can increase the ozone more than uh, 10 of, to 15 ppb, and that contribute to the photochemistry. And also, and uh, as, as I mentioned before, the N205 chemistry heterogeneous uptake will go two different ways. One is produce nitrate chloride, the other way is produce nitrate. So we also estimate how much of the nitrate will produce from the NTO5 chemistry. So this, this is an uh, estimation from the observation. So the formation rate in uh, nitrate in, in the regional plumes in northern China, this was uh, mirrored on the mountain, the, the mountain top side. So basically the average data is about 2.2. That's it per hour. So if you, if this chemistry continue for the whole night, for, for example, 10 hours, that can produce more than 20 microgram. And for the maximum uh, case, that can contribute more than 40 or 50 microgram per cubic meter of nitrate. That is one of very important uh, nitrate production pathway. And also in the southern China, as I mentioned before, the severe haze episode, we also did some modeling study by using the MCM, try to compare how much of the nitrate pro, uh, production potential compared to the daytime photochemistry, like the NO2 uh, reactor with OH, 
so so basically you, the results show that in the nighttime this NTO5 chemistry contribute as much as the uh, production in the daytime so the uh, non sure nighttime heterogeneous NTO5 chemistry that contribute to nitrate you know, almost uh, around 40 to 60 percent of the total nitrate uh, including, uh, including the daytime chemistry well and uh, because of the impact on the ozone and also the nitrate so that can also affect the you know entire regional air quality we also use a uh, regional model and try to and uh, evaluate the impact of the this uh, NTO5 heterogeneous chemistry and also the CLO2 now basically when they uh, because of the radical emitted and release uh, sorry it release from the uh, CLO2 that can affect the uh, ozone formation re uh, region in different region so with with the uh, some stu sensitivity studies by including the this heterogeneous chemistry in and out so we we can basically see there are differences happen you know in different region more uh, regions are actually uh, shift from the VOC and NOx can to, to to a mixed regime, so that can affect the and and the uh, control strategy that local government should be considered. So this is something, and uh, we have done with the uh, uh, chemical transfer model. Okay, so um, these are all about the NTO5 chemistry. So I like I uh, would like to give a very short summary on this. And so we, we in mainland China and Hong Kong, so we, we found significant, you know, NTO5 heterogeneous chemistry that, and also the high level of CO2. The production of the CO2 can significantly increase oxidation capacity and also the ozone production in the uh, region. And uh, NTO5 heterogeneous chemistry also are important source for the nitrate particles. And uh, however, the uptake coefficient of NO5 is still complicated to be quantified in the model or in the field. So they are depending on the aer aerosol uh, composition and the property, but still need f further study to try to identify and, and, and develop a better parameterization to account for this uh, effect of chemistry in the model. So. And from our study, we, we derive an observa observation-based uh, empirical parameterization that can be you know, used at least. Uh, so at this stage, we can use to do some simulation with the model to predict the Im impact of this kind of chemistry in air quality in China. And uh, the second part, and uh, I'm going to briefly introduce a, a, a newly funded uh, program a project and in Hong Kong and this is uh, uh, mostly focusing on the photochemical air pollution in this region and uh, so this project is led by Professor Tao Wang in Hong Kong Polytechnic University and uh, Guy also one of our co-PI so we have uh, 10 co-PI from different university and a different region so this is uh, just uh, started last year that will uh, this project will last for five years Yes, this is the largest research project in Hong Kong, and including you know mainland China is almost on the same scale for the fundamental research. And uh, in Hong Kong, we already have this uh, research scene for ten years, but this is the only one focusing on air pollution. So we we, we only have this one. So a briefly introduction of, uh, about the background. So we know that in the in, actually, in Hong Kong, the Pierre River Delta region, we have uh, both the uh, terrestrial emissions and urban emissions and also oceanic emissions because we are located as a coastal region. So there are still large knowledge gaps in the, on the atmosphere chemistry in the industry. Uh, in, in, sorry, I think, okay. I think I missed some. Okay, so the by uh, sorry, the terrestrial emission, including the biogenic VOCs and HONO, can interact with the urban emission. So 
and uh, sorry I, I think this slide has something okay okay so uh, as the previous study showed that there are still some missing OH radical source happen you now in the interaction about the biogenic VOC and also the urban emission and also the, there are still some missing HONO source because HONO can photolysis and produce OH radical so this kind of chemistry are still uh, some uh, knowledge gap in this region and also in the coastal region the interaction between the oceanic emission like halogens chloride together with the uh, urban emission are uh, also are poorly uh, still not being well uh, characterized so this is uh, the reason why we want to focus on this area and also in the urban region and uh, in addition to the regional air pollution problem so in the street level the how this kind of uh, chemistry and uh, uh, affects the uh, street level uh, air quality also are not so sure and for example the regional ozone and also the whole emission from the vehicles in the street environment that can you know affect the the entire you know, local uh, chemistry in the air quality and uh, but in Hong Kong we know uh, because of the government uh, efforts all the emission of the NOx and the VOC has been decreasing for last you know, 20 years however the ozone problem is still a uh, you know, only most uh, uh, severe problem in Hong Kong. So we're still showing some increasing or n at least no decreasing trend for the ozone in, in this region. So that's why we want to focus on the photochemical ozone problem. So for, for this project, we're trying to understand the, the complex multi-scale process you know, from the street level process and to the you know, regional level on the photochemical production in this subtropical and high density urban area and also we, we, we try to pro provide some evidence based uh, you know, uh, suggestion to the government to working with the uh, photochemical air pollution so this is the overall strategy of our study so we we including the uh, ter terrestrial and the biogenic emission studies in one uh, as one focus and also we studied the reactive chlorine emission and the oceanic emission and then we because there are already a lot of study working on the urban emission so by combining all these uh, three uh, aspects together we're focusing on the radical chemistry and the photochemical production by including the street level and also the regional level so finally we want to pro provide some policy relevant uh, uh, science relevant policy suggestion to the government so uh, I will go briefly for, for each core area so first one we're focusing on the biogenic VOC emission we are going to use uh, do the measurement from the leaf scale to the uh, branch scale and also the can canopy measurement try to uh, de uh, uh, get the emission factors database from the local trees and lo local forest in the Pier River Delta region in the Great Bay Area in China and also the soil emission flux on, on the Hono because uh, there are still unknown source for Hono and uh, we're trying to figure out this and then this uh, kind of a data uh, database can be put and uh, improved uh, updated into a Megan model with a biogenic uh, emission uh, with updated biogenic emission database so this is uh, our first research uh, folks the second one we're trying to uh, validate and update the uh, parameterization for the CISO aerosol and uh, try to make sure the CISO aerosol estimation in the uh, in the regional model can better simulate the CISO like current emission in the coastal region and also we try to develop, develop a more uh, updated and high resolution of chlorine emission from anthropogenic source but late, uh, later we also develop a new uh, more updated chlorine emission from others like bimers burning source but here I didn't 
uh, put it in the in the slide. But I'm still working on that. But this is a result on the anthropogenic chlorine emission. So this is the data. We can see the uh, HCl and the fine particle chloride and the, the distribution in, in different regions. So this emission imagery data that uh, has already been used by by different researchers, yeah, including U.S. Daniel Jacob and also Alfonso. I noticed that Alfonso is a visiting uh, researcher in in Enca, and we also work closely with them. And they are using our emission imagery on, on anthropogenic chlorine emission. And also, and we try to develop some uh, radical measurement techniques including the OH radical by using the seams technique. And also I try to develop some uh, techniques to mirror the halogen cam halogen spaces, uh, including the chloride radical and uh, and, and also uh, and the uh, bromine and iodine chemicals. And, uh, and also and we try to uh, organize a comprehensive fuel campaign in, in this region, try to understand how the precursors, radicals, and also the products, how their uh, interaction between these kind of uh, spaces. And uh, also, and we, we propose to do the chamber simulation working on, work, work on the uh, oxidation of uh, volatile organic compounds by some new radical that as, uh, for example, the nitrate radical and the chloride radical, how this kind of uh, new pathway contribute to the oxidation of the uh, VOCs, and also some uh, observation-based photochemical box model. So here I just show the field campaign. We just conducted first phase field campaign in last year, and from the August to December. So we basically we mirror the some radical precursors including the Hono, ozone, and the chloride. Uh, uh, so chlorine, molecular, and the nitric chloride, N2,5, and, uh, and methane. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, formaldehyde. And also the you know different organic compounds from the very, very volatile, uh, volatile species to the low volatile uh, aerosols by using different uh, techniques and uh, instruments together. So currently, we are still working on the data because there are a lot of instruments and a lot of uh, data uh, obtained from this campaign. Just briefly show you some uh, result. So during the uh, uh, September to, August, uh, to uh, October campaign, we captured different uh, air plumes, uh, air air mass from different regions, including the South uh, China Sea Ocean air plumes and also the mixed air plume and also some continental air plumes from the from the South China. So we can see the different uh, like concentration of the nitric chloride and uh, N2O5 and also the molecular uh, chlorine and also some other proteins. We are still working on the data analysis. And for the chamber study, we are tr focusing on the and the different radicals, especially the nitrate radical, chlorine radical, and also focusing on the precursor, you know, including the biogenic uh, uh, precursors that are uh, more abundant in this region, and also some anthropogenic precursor, especially the toluene, which we have very high concentration in the in the Hong Kong and the Pierre River Delta region. We are trying to understand the the oxidation pathway and especially the multi-generation products of, of the organics and by using the chamber facility. And also we have another uh, task of, of focusing on the uh, micro or meso scale process. This, this task is actually are led by Guy and uh, trying to use the uh, large eddy simulation and uh, chemistry corp uh, model I try to simulate in the street level how the chemistry and the dynamics interact and how this regional pollution and the local emission in the street level be interacted and affect the, the air quality in, in the small uh, scale and also the interaction with the large scale. So also trying to develop a, 
a Wolf Cam UCM LES model. It's long name. Okay, I, I, I don't know the detail about these models, but Guy is in charge of that. And the reason why we start to think of or start to look at this uh, you know, small scale, uh, micro scale chemistry is because in Hong Kong, actually, we did a uh, measurement in the roadside. The, the roadside, we measure very high concentration of Hono. I think four or five ppb at least. So that Hono actually can contribute to the photochemistry because the photolysis of this Hono contribute to the OH radical. So uh, uh, previously, we, would, we did not consider the photochemistry in the straight level because we, we, we saw there are a lot of NO, so there should be no much photochemistry or oxidation capacity or process happening in the straight level. But after this study, we found that this whole NO emission from the vehicles happening in the street level actually can contribute more than 20 times the increase of the hawks. That is something you know, uh, we found in Hong Kong. So we, we think this micro environmental chemistry is also very important, the reason why we uh, started trying to look at this. And also finally, so we're trying to you know, transfer the scientific research result to to a policy re relevant uh, uh, you know, recommendations or suggestions because we also involved some uh, policy makers like the government officers in our project team so including by you know, improve the modeling improve the chemical transfer model for there to do the uh, air quality forecasting and also and our result that can you know, contribute to their, for example, the ozone formations uh, regime. After we know this kind of uh, uh, fundamental chemistry uh, result, we can better produce or uh, evaluate their current policy and also pro provide some recommendation on that. So this our uh, team. We we have ten copies, and the, and the, our uh, PC is Professor Tao Wang and the Gi. It's our one of our co PI, and so we have total ten co PIs, seven from the uh, university, and two co PI from mainland China, and 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 also you know, we have two, one co PI and one co I from the local government. They are working on uh, they are from the EPD Environmental Production Department, so they are trying to translate our scientific result into policy uh, result. Uh, and also we have uh, some uh, collaborators and ad advisors, including Steve Brown in NOAA, and also uh, Alex Gunther, he was previously was say, was here, right? And also uh, uh, also Don Blake and uh, Daniel Jack. So and these are collaborators, and also we more collaboration from from the audience and also other outside collaborator are welcome. So we, if you are interested in our study, uh, in our campaigns, and uh, or you know you are very welcome to 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 do more collaboration with us on, on this topic. Also, uh, finally, I want to thank our sponsors and also the collaborators, and special thanks to to Guy for inviting me and hosting my visit. And finally, there are one photo show from the mountain top in Hong Kong. This is the Dai uh, Mao Shen. This is the mountain top side. And uh, another side from the North China. It's also a mountain top side. OK, thank you. So thanks very much. I see a lot of interactions with what we're doing here, and also a lot of structure in this program that you just proposed and, and showed. Any questions? I know it's getting a bit late. Yep. Uh, Thank you.
Okay, and uh, just you know, very two very good questions. The first one about the uptake coefficient. In the uh, as I mentioned before, there are different ways of trying to derive the uptake coefficient by using the uh, field data. So and and we tried, but actually because there are always limitations, you do not always have the enough data that can be you know derive the uptake coefficient. For example, sometimes you don't have the uh, uh, Nit high resolution with nitrate data, so you cannot use a use a product uh, method. So, but sometimes we have the flu but we only recently we have the flow tube in C two method, so we can do the direct measurement. But when you do the flow tube measurement, you need to stop the ambient measurement, so you cannot have the N two five ambient data at the same time. So that's always some limitations. But and. But your question is correct. That there are there are some uncertainties that can you know existing in different methods, but we haven't had a comprehensive comparison between the different methods. Yeah, and for the but this could be a uh, you know something could be done in the future if we want to evaluate more accurately uh, the uptake coefficient. But after we get the you know, in situ flow tube reaction method, I think we, we, we can directly using this method. Because the steady state method also has some limitation. You, you can only apply to the data when there are the steady state was achieved. But a, a lot of campaigns actually when you take a look on the data, but the, the steady state is not valid. So you cannot use that method. Then you you try to derive some other method. So it's always some have some limitations, but uh, we we can try to have a look on that you know, in the future studies. And for the second you know, question for the ship emission, actually, yes, you know we uh, we have some kind of uh, uh, people working on the ship emission, especially the the uh, there's one. Let me show you the. The government of uh, KPI, Peter Peter Louis, he is a guy in charge of the marine, you know, emission department in the Hong Kong EPD. So he is looking on that. And also, one uh, in our in our group, there's one PhD and one postdoc that are trying to evaluate how the marine emission and contribute to the you know regional air quality. But I, I, and uh, I, I I don't remember the exact result, but it seems like you have the large. It's yeah, large. yeah, it's large. Yeah. It's large, and they have data from all the ships as they Yeah, yeah, along. yeah. See. Yeah. Other questions? Yep. Yeah, uh, uh, actually, so for the reaction of chlorine radical compared to the OH radical, we know that the the uh, reaction rate const constant is much higher, uh, but the concentration of chlorine radical is relatively lower than the OH radical, and uh, so for the uh, VOC reactions in the model, actually we. In our group, yeah, former postal, he he did some work on the the MCM model. He add update a lot of reactions about the chloride radical with VOC in the model, and also did some uh, model sim simulation. I think I I don't remember the exact how much of the chlorine contribute to the overall VOC oxidation, but. Uh, I can email you the the paper. It's on the GM uh, GMD, I think. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last question. There is one. <clears throat> so jet lag, so you can fall asleep. Yeah, if almost. <laughs> if we don't pay attention. So, thank you very much for those okay. two presentations, essentially, <laughs> and also congratulations for all what you're doing over there and. I hope you'll be here for a few days and coming in and out. So if you want to talk to Joe, that's 
good opportunity. Uh, just make an appointment with him now. And uh, again, thank you, and let's thank you. No, thank you.